All right. Impression on the mind of the disciple of hierarchical intent. This is something far greater and more inclusive than the ability of the mind of the disciple to register the content of the minds within the ashram with which he is affiliated or even the mind of the master. The purpose aspect of the plan begins to impress his now highly illumined abstract mind for the integrated purpose as far as the hierarchy is concerned begins slowly to impress him. Little by little he begins to register impressions from Shambhala. With this I cannot deal. It concerns the growth which follows the fourth and fifth initiations and therefore training given to a master. With it, you have no concern. Your major task as aspirants is to cultivate the higher sensitivity, to render yourself so pure and selfless that your minds remain undisturbed by the happenings in the three worlds, to seek that attentive spiritual sense which will enable you to be impressed, and then to interpret correctly the impressions received. I have said that initiation is in reality a great experiment with energy. The life of the occult student is consciously lived in the world of energies. Those energies have always been present for the whole of existence in all the kingdoms of nature is manifested energy, but men are not aware of this. They are not conscious, for instance, when they succumb to irritation and find themselves voicing that irritation in loud words or in angry thoughts that they are taking astral energy and using it. The use of this energy admits them with ease to a level of astral living, which is not suitable for them. Continual use of this energy brings about what the Master Moria has called habits of residence which imperil the resident. It is when the aspirant recognizes that he himself is composed of energy units, held in coherent expression by a still stronger energy, that of integration, that he begins consciously to work in a world of forces similarly composed. He then begins to use energy of a certain kind and selectively and takes one of the initial steps towards becoming a true occultist. This world of energy in which he lives and moves and has his being is the living, organized vehicle of manifestation of the planetary logos. Through it, energies are circulating all the time and are in constant movement, being directed and controlled by the head center of the planetary logos. They create great vortices of force or major points of tension throughout his body of manifestation. The spiritual hierarchy of our planet is such a vortex. Humanity itself is another and one which is today in a condition of almost violent activity, owing to its becoming a focus of divine attention. Certain great readjustments are going on in that center, for it is beginning to conform at long last to divine intention. I have elsewhere pointed out that for the first time in the long history of human development, energy from Shambhala has made a direct impact upon this third planetary center. This is not due entirely to the point in evolution attained by mankind. This attainment is only a secondary reason or cause. It is due to the will of Sunat Kumar himself as he prepares for a certain cosmic initiation. This initiation requires the reorganization of the energies flowing through and composing that center which we call the race of men. This creates a rearrangement within the center itself and thus brings into manifested expression certain aspects and qualities, always inherent in those energies which have not hitherto been recognized. This creative crisis has been made possible by three major happenings. One, the conclusion of a 25,000 year cycle or movement around what is called the Lesser Zodiac. This connotes a major cycle of experience in the life of our planetary logos. It is related to the interplay between the planetary logos and the solar logos as the latter responds to energies emanating from the 12 zodiacal constellations. 2. The end of the Piscean Age, 
This simply means that the energies coming from Pisces during the last 2,000 years are now being rapidly superseded by energies coming from Aquarius. These result in major changes in the life of the planetary logos and potently affect his body of manifestation through the medium of his three major centers, Shambhala, the hierarchy, and humanity. Three, the increasingly dominant activity of the seventh ray of order or ceremonial magic, as it is somewhat erroneously called. This ray is now coming into manifestation and is in close cooperation with the two above factors. It produces also the lessening of the power of the sixth ray of idealism. This has had a long cycle and has greatly hastened the evolutionary process. It demonstrates its effective work in the emergence today of the great world ideologies. I am necessarily considering these energies only in relation to the human consciousness. There are other factors present in our planet today, but these are the ones which will, in a vague sense, mean something to you as you think and seek to understand. The great cosmic initiation through which our planetary logos is passing, forget not my words, initiatory process, produces an entire reorganization of all the energies of which his body of manifestation is composed. It heightens the quality or the vibration of certain of the ray energies and lessens the potency of others. Direction also enters in. Certain planetary centers become the recipients in a new and vital manner of the redirected ray potencies. Among these, at this time, the human family, or the third vital center, becomes a prime objective. The three major centers in the body of the planetary logos are the head center, Shambhala, first ray of will, the heart center, the hierarchy, the second ray of love, wisdom, the throat center, humanity, the third ray of active intelligence. The impact of the new incoming energies upon humanity will result from a planned redirection. This will bring in an era of greatly enhanced creative activity. It will be an activity such as has never been seen before and which will express itself in every department of human living. In this connection, I would remind you of the relation existing between the sacral center, the physical creative center, and the throat center, and of the teaching and net, the raising of the energies from this lower center to the throat center. This can be seen happening in the human being as he progresses along the path of evolution and is equally present in the life and experience of the planetary logos. This progressive creative raising necessarily produces a cycle of tremendous difficulty in the life of the aspirant to initiation for the macrocosm undergoes in his minute living process what the planetary logos undergoes in a cosmic process. When, as is the case today, humanity itself is in process of becoming creative in the higher sense, and when this synchronizes with a major creative planetary activity, then a cycle of very great disturbance eventuates which necessarily affects every individual within the race of men. Hence the sexual disturbance to be seen everywhere, with the license present in every country, and the apparent breakdown of the marriage relation. This indicates the emergence eventually of a creativity of such wondrous dimensions that the world will stand amazed. Nothing like it will have been seen before. A creative planning for human well-being and a political expression implementing this planning will demonstrate in every country. A creative thinking will be apparent which will express itself in writing and in poetry Creative imagining will produce the new art, the new colors, the new architecture, and the new culture. A creative responsiveness to the music of the spheres will bring forth the new music. All this will be in response to the creative reorganization and the newly directed energies which are engaging the attention of the planetary logos at this time. All this reorganization and redirection of energies is carried forward in the realm of the divine third aspect, that of divine active intelligence. Therefore, the human center registers this major aspect and becomes intensely invocative. 
This invocative appeal being unitedly directed towards the second major center, the hierarchy, inevitably evokes a response. Invocation accompanied by the creative imagination will produce that new creative activity which will bring the new heavens and the new earth into being. Three points I would like to make here, they have a definite bearing upon our subject. One, this intense creative activity falls into two parts. A, a destructive cycle, wherein the old order passes away and that which has been created, human civilization with, with its accompanying institutions, is destroyed. With this destructive action, humanity is today occupying itself most unconsciously. The major creative agents are the intelligentsia of the race. B, a cycle of restoration, with many accompanying difficulties in which the mass of men take part under the influence and inspiration of a regenerated intelligentsia. Two, this process received its initial impulse as a result of a group decision within the hierarchy itself. Certain masters, who were facing the sixth initiation of decision at the time, a relatively small but powerful group, decided together to tread the path of earth service, technically understood, in order to bring about the changes which they sensed as desirable and as already existing within the consciousness of the one initiator, the planetary logos. It was their decision, taken early in this century, which precipitated in the center which we call the race of men, those potencies and stimulating energies which produced that major destructive agency, the World War, 1914 to 1945. As these energies occultly fell into the center, the effect produced was both good and bad. Human unity and unanimity, human planning for group welfare, and human creativity, expressed primarily at this time through science, received a tremendous stimulation. Simultaneously, the entering potencies released by this decision produced an upsurging of evil in the hearts of men so inclined, leading to an analogous or paralleling unity, unanimity, and creative activity of separative and hateful evil. This, in its turn, opened the door where evil dwelt and let loose on earth the full fury of the Black Lodge. That this would be the result the masters knew when making their decision. They consciously struck a blow at the materialism which was binding humanity and imprisoning the human spirit. This evoked a prompt reaction from the forces of evil which had created and held in being the modern materialistic world with its emphasis upon forms and money. The masters had confidence that the human spirit would be able to live through the period of upheaval and emerge eventually into the new era ready to build a new world and to reorganize all human resources, material, mental, and spiritual. Three, the response of humanity from the angle of a spiritual realization of the presented opportunity was the emergence of the new group of world servers. They appeared in every country, conscious of their task of crystallizing and making effective human goodwill, though generally unconscious of their hierarchical relationship. Their appearance evoked an immediate reaction from the spiritual hierarchy, and experienced disciples made their appearance in the ranks of the new group of world servers, directing their efforts, voicing their aims, and stimulating their understanding. The new group worked in and through every department of human thinking, human welfare, and human planning. As a result, and almost immediately, the men of goodwill everywhere in the world took heart of grace a most appropriate phrase, and became active. The three points made here will demonstrate to you the factual nature of the circulation of energies. All these happenings are part of a process of planetary initiation. Such an initiation cannot take place without important effects, both in the hierarchy and in the human family. In old Atlantean days, it was the masters facing the same sixth initiation who decided to bring that ancient civilization to an end. They therefore sacrificed the form aspect of manifestation and created a situation in which the soul of humanity was liberated from the prison in which it found itself. 
Today, a material catastrophe such as the flood has not been deemed necessary. It is believed that humanity can and will find its own way out of the world difficulties.